This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season. Approximately 83% of the 2024 sugar beet crop in North Dakota and Minnesota has been planted. Getting a jump start in the growing season has many benefits, but some of the most challenging weeds to manage are also emerging. Today we're discussing weed strategy with Tom Peters, NDSU and University of Minnesota Extension Sugar Beet Agronomist. Tom, you often speak of water hemp emerging with sugar beet or water hemp emerging without activation of soil residue herbicides. How does 2024 compare to the last few years? Bruce, it's been an incredibly different year than our previous years. So most of the time I'm talking about water hemp emerging at the same time of sugar beets or maybe water hemp emerging when we haven't had activating rains on fields. Not the case in 2024. So we've planted early. We have over 80% of our crop planted and we're getting very timely rains to get those pre-emergence herbicides activated. Tom, early weeds are kochia and lambs quarters. Any sign of them in producer fields? I've seen both. But the weed that I'm really worried about, Bruce, is kochia. And the reason is, is emerge kochia likely is glyphosate-resistant kochia. We have to treat it when it's small. We're using a herbicide called Spinade. Spinade is most effective when the kochia is very small. We call it less than dime size. Spinade rate is going to be dependent on the size of the sugar beets and also environmental conditions. So on hot days, we're going to use less. And I want to make sure our growers know that we're going to likely need to make repeat spinade applications to control kochia. Tom, let's go back to water hemp. Prees are out, so what's the next step for water hemp control? Well, since we had such an effective rain event to get our prees activated, let's let our herbicides do their work and let's not be in a hurry to get what we call the lay-by applications on. So let's wait for a solid two-leaf stage and then continue to follow the programs. Use the chloroacetamide herbicides, combine them with glyphosate and ethafumazate if you wish, and then make the second application at the sixth leaf stage. Tom, do you have any comments on dual magnum alone or dual magnum mixed with ethyl fumisate pre for those who are still planting? So, you know, it's interesting, Bruce. We haven't talked a lot about dual magnum. And the reason is, is we planted early this year. My concern was the rates of dual magnum that we were using wouldn't last until the time when water hemp is germinating and emerging. Well, guess what? Today I saw water hemp. It's starting to germinate and emerge. So I would highly recommend that any fields that are to be planted or are going to be planted this week, that dual magnum be part of the recipe, part of the residual herbicide program, if the grower calls out water hemp as an important production challenge in their field. Can you give us an idea of the rates for dual magnum? In terms of rates, I would suggest either 8, 12, or 16 fluid ounces. So 8 ounces if your soils are sandier soils, coarse textured, less than 3.5% organic matter, 12 if you're combining with ethafumazate, and then 16 if the application is alone with no other herbicides. Thanks, Tom. Our guest has been Tom Peters, NDSU and University of Minnesota Extension Sugar Beet Agronomist. This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season.